It was an event so terrifying, it changed America. One of the most infamous murders in the U.S. And now, one of the young women involved is asking for freedom after 37 years in prison. Susan Atkins was a member of the Manson family, convicted in the 1969 murders of actress Sharon Tate and four others. Now, she has brain cancer. Doctors say she has just months to live, and she is raising questions about mercy then and now. We remember the wide eyes, the deranged laughter, smiling about murder. Their joy, they said, came from Charles Manson. Prosecutors called the monster. That was Susan Atkins almost 40 years ago. The girl who was smiling in the courtroom, those eerie smiles, was that a sane person? No. With as much it, it's, you know, it's really difficult to go back to that. But again, for the people who believe that in order to be able to do monstrous things, you have to be a monster. That's simply not true. That is simply not true. She met Manson when she was just 18, a topless dancer who had left home for San Francisco as a teen, eventually moving into a commune in Haight-Ashbury. Amid the partying and the drugs, she said she was just a seeker and thought she had found something in Charles Manson. She became the fourth young girl to join his family. She had a child there. She says it was his brainwashing and the drugs that drove her to join in the killing of the beautiful and magical pregnant actress, Sharon Tate. She asked me about her baby What'd you say to her? Now, all these years after the murder, Atkins dying from brain cancer, and her family are the ones pleading for mercy. It's ridiculous to continue to pay millions of dollars to keep her under custody when she can't sit up in bed. She's been incarcerated at the California Institution for Women at Frontiers for 37 years, denied parole 11 times. I spoke to her in 2002. She said she was a different person, hadn't given up hope of being released. By the way, there was a ceremony with applause underway in a nearby room. You know a person by their behavior. And my behavior in this, in, in this institution speaks to the change that occurred over 30 years ago. I'm not the same person that I was when I came in here. Do you expect to be out someday? I would like to be out someday. I hope to be out someday. And it's amazing that I still have hope. I don't know about expectations anymore. And Charles Manson himself has said, I didn't make them do anything. They did what they wanted to do. They did what they mm -hmm. had inside them to do. It's mm -hmm. who they were. I never told anybody to do anything other than what they wanted to do. And if they wanted to do murder, that was okay with you? That was none of my business, woman. I'm a convict. I'm an outlaw. I'm a rebel. I'm not a Sunday school teacher. I can't answer for what Charles Manson says. I don't know anymore what is in his mind. She said she has tried to live a transformation, spiritual enlightenment, helping others. One time I asked her why she keeps trying, and she said that she knew that she couldn't change public opinion. But that's not why you do good things. That's not why you try to help people. She said she found strength in the other women, lifers also sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole, though they rarely see it. Who's, who's had the most parole appearances in the room? Anybody got a shot? <laughs> but Tate's family has said the debt must be unending. Sharon Tate's father, Paul, wrote, 31 years ago, I sat in a courtroom with a jury and watched with others. I saw a young woman who giggled, snickered, and shouted out insults. Even while testifying about my daughter's last breath, she laughed. What argument can you make to him? There is no. There is only the continued attempt to apologize to him. Every time I've gone to the board, I've made every attempt possible to apologize. Remorse? and sorrow for hideous actions 
is not calculatable. It, you can't calculate it. It's not something that's tangible. What remorse is, is not sitting in a prison cell for the rest of your life, crying over what happened and what you cannot change. Remorse is genuine repentance, turning away from behavior. I know you don't say his name, but when you hear the name Charles Manson, is there something physical that goes on inside you? Yeah. Yes. It's, he is the one person that, that is the most difficult person in my life to forgive. And I work on that. I don't want to live a life with any unforgiveness in it. So many people lost so much. The victims, the families of the victims, the families of the people who were involved, the community at large, the society at large, everybody lost. And what about the son born when she lived with the Manson group? He was placed for adoption at age one after her conviction. Are you in contact with him? No. All I know is that he's lived his life unscathed with this he hasn't been touched by this. And I'm very grateful for that. Do you think he knows? I don't know. I may never know. And let us know what you think about her remaining days. In a flash, be the first to know what's coming up on Good Morning America tomorrow with the GMA Daily Flash email. All the great insider details you want to know from GMA. Go to abcnews.com, click the GMA page, and sign up for the Daily Flash. And you can even enter to win the weekly GMA Flash gift bag giveaway. Sign up now.